Hey, hello everyone. So I've been working for a while now on trying to add the online features to Survival Engine. So it's finally here. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up all the multiplayer at networking and how to use uh, this new asset Survival Engine online. Uh, first of all, if you haven't watched any uh, other video before about Survival Engine, uh, or if you're not really familiar with the engine itself, uh, I really recommend to go check the onboarding video about Survival Engine because this one will be more about all the multiplayer features and uh, networking. So the first thing that you can do after importing the asset is that you can, if you just want to test, you can first go into uh, build setting and then make a build. Make sure you have all the scenes that you want to test and then the menu at the top and then build. And uh, one thing that you'll be able to do is to start the app twice. So I start one here and then another one. And let's go create a game. So you can change your name here and then uh, select a save file. And the scene, we will go with the forest scene. And then I'll try to join the game here. So if you're testing on the same computer to uh, join the game, the local game, you need to uh, use this IP here. So 127.0.0.1 and then click join. And there you go. You have two player in the same game. So this is one of the way that you can test, but obviously if um, you're working on the game and then you're changing code and all that, uh, it's not always very efficient to make a build every time. So one thing that you can do is to uh, start the Unity project twice. I'll show you how to do that and that, that's a really cool way to be uh, a lot more efficient in uh, your work. So let's do that right now. So first you're going to go into your project folder and then you will make a new folder. I call it survival engine online two. And then you will need to copy three folders here. So uh, packages, project setting, and then user settings. Copy it here. And then we are going to open the command line, type uh, CMD here, right click, run as administrator. And then I'm going to go to this uh, folder here so I can copy this CD, go to this folder. And then we're going to create a sim link. So the way to do that is make link D because it's a folder and then assets is the name of the sync link. It's going to link to the other project. So now you're going to go into your original project inside the assets folder, copy the path and paste it here. Then press enter. Now it says that the link has been created. So if I go back to my new folder, I will see here that there's a shortcut that goes to the original asset folders. What this will allow you to do is to open the project twice in Unity. So the first one here is already open. I can click on open project. I will add a new one. I will add the one I just created here and then open it. So once the second project open, you can uh, just go into open the menu scene. We'll do the same in the other Unity project, which is the same by the way. That's why by creating a sim link, now every time I change a file in the assets here, any file, then uh, it will be also updated in the other one. So this is a really cool way to be able to work on the same project with uh, Unity open twice here. Menu and then uh, open the menu here too. Let's try it. 
let's create a game again mark and then this time we'll test the farm scene and then I will join the game here as you can see now I have my two players uh, playing together in uh, unity directly so up to now I've been showing you how to connect directly by peer-to-peer -peer. this is a very simple way when you're just testing the game so when you create a game you can see your LAN IP this is your local IP so anyone on the same router will be able to connect but uh, the problem with that is that uh, the host will always need to uh, allow this app to go through the firewall and also allow any uh, port that the game is using so this is not uh, really convenient for your players usually you will maybe want to have a dedicated server so this is another option that you have uh, included in this asset you can go in the scenes folder and then server server game so this scene here is the dedicated server so this one you can run it as a host but it will not be a player so this one you could just host it online on a cloud server and then uh, people will, will be able to join from anywhere without having to change all their settings like port forwarding and firewall so let's test it i will start the server here and again since I'm running on the same computer I can just use uh, the local IP here and there you go now I'm in the game so you can see here dedicated server uh, is also running the game but there's no character associated with it and when you're hosting it as a server you can uh, turn off all the graphics to uh, limit performance but for testing purposes, sometimes it's good to see what is happening from here. So this is it for the dedicated server. Uh, I'm not going to show you this in this video, but in another video, I show you how to host it online, how to create a cloud server and upload it and host it there. So everything I've shown you so far, you have to connect uh, with the IP directly. But again, this is not ideal for players. They probably will want to uh, just find other people without having to worry about IP and all that. So that's why you also have a lobby server, which is a separate application that you can also host online. People will connect to it and it will allow them to find uh, other people and connect with them. So now I'm running the lobby server. If I go to the lobby menu, and I connect to it um, it will allow me to create a game create and then uh, people will be able to join and then I can also just start the server and the lobby server will take care of starting the games but there's three different way that it can do that so if you go in the resource folder network data you can see here uh, under lobby server you can choose what kind of game server the lobby will start so right now it's uh, set to dedicated server so that means then uh, every time someone starts a game it will uh, start a new uh, server application that people can connect to but if you choose peer-to-peer -peer, instead the host that created the game will share their IP on the lobby this is done all in the back end so the players don't see that but basically they will send their IP to other players and then they will be able to connect directly uh, but if you're using this mode you uh, the host will need to do some port forwarding and also opening their port on their firewall and then relay server that's to use the unity relay services that they offer I talk a bit more about that in the in the documentation if you're interested to know more about it so now that you know how to connect players to each other, we'll go into uh, more of the technical details. So the first thing that you'll notice compared to the offline version of Survival Engine is that you have a new manager that is called Network Manager. You need to make sure to add this prefab in all of your scenes, but not just your game scenes, also in all of your menu. So if I go to the menu here, you see the manager is also there. This is the 
one that takes care of connecting people to each other and also sending all the network messages. So you have a script here called the network. Let's open it. So this is really the main networking script. You will see that uh, some of the function here allows you to connect. You can use a host game to create a new game. You can uh, start a game server. So this is also a host, but without a player character, or you can join another game here. And then at the end of the script, you can see um, useful accessors. So here you can uh, check what is your client ID, what is the server ID, what's your username, and then you can check if it's a server or if it's a client or if it's a host. The host is both basically. Now if I go back to the game scene and uh, let's just take any kind of item prefab put in the scene something that is uh, different from the original survival engine is that now most object with will have the s network object component this is the component that you need to add to all your object that you want to sync in between the clients and the server the framework used for survival engines networking is called netcode for game objects it is the new official networking framework supported by unity and in that framework you have the component network object but don't use that one instead for a survival engine you need to use s network object which uh, works in a similar way the reason is that i had to rework the object system to allow to have a lot more objects in the scene so as you can see there are a lot of trees here and uh, they can all be cut by the players and it will become extremely laggy with hundreds of objects in the scene. So I had to rework a bit the spawning system, which uh, will only send the objects that are near the players and it will ignore everything else in the scene. And this is the network optimizer that takes care of uh, spawning and despawning the network objects whenever they come in this range of uh, the players. Now, if I open one of the regular script that we have in survival engine, like selectable, you will also notice that they don't inherit from uh, S network behavior, which uh, is also the reworked version of uh, network behavior that is included in uh, netcode for game object. So all the scripts that have networking features, they need to inherit from this. Now I'm going to show you how the actual code works for networking. So I'll open character because it's a good example. So I've created an action system that let you uh, sync variable and also call function uh, in between the client and the server. So if you look at this class here, character, it inherits from craftable. But if I go inside craftable and then inside this one, you will see that it inherits from S network behavior. So it allows me to use all the networking features and anything that inherits from S network behavior also need to have network object as a component. So if I go on one of the characters, you can see uh, the character script is here. And since this is a S network behavior, then I also need to add the network object here. I mean, S network object. So let's go back to the script. Now, if you go down to the on spawn function and on the spawn, uh, spawning is uh, when the server start syncing an object with the client. It's called spawn. And then the spawn, it means that it will stop syncing the object. So you, you can uh, instantiate an object in your scene normally, like you do uh, in Unity usually. But as long as you don't call the spawn function, so I will go here so you can see that function. It's inside the S network object. As long as you don't call this function here, spawn, then the, this object will not be synced with the clients. It will only exist on the server. So here, whenever you use the character.create function, uh, it will automatically spawn it. So this is when 
this function would be call. And the way the action system work is that you uh, need first to create a new action handler with a reference to the network behavior here. And then you can register different actions that will be sent through the network and which function needs to be called. So whenever I trigger the order move action, then it will call this function on both the client and the server. So here you can also change the delivery, which is uh, usually reliable or unreliable. This one will be guaranteed, but it can be a bit slower. This one is better for actions that are called every frame, because even though uh, one fail and don't reach the clients or the server, then you can still uh, receive the one that will come in the next frame. While this one is more for actions that happens less often. And then another option that you can change when you register an action is the target. So by default, it's set to all. That means that it will be triggered on both the server and the clients, but you can choose uh, maybe you want this action to be just on the clients or just on the server. And this is not who can call the action, this is who receives the action. The one that can call the action is usually the owner of the object. So you always have an owner ID here. By default, it's the server, but uh, you can uh, also change the owner. So if you look at the player characters, you will see that each player own their own character. But anything else like uh, animals or items is usually owned by the server. So by default, it's called on uh, both the clients and the server. The server usually have the, like the final word on what is happening. But uh, the good thing about calling it on both is that the client can a bit predict what is going to happen without having to wait for the server to send back the refresh. So this is how you register an action. You can see this is uh, what happens uh, when this action is called. But to trigger the action, you need to call action.trigger and then set the same type that you register with the parameter. So this one will probably be called from the server. I think in the script animal, based on the behavior, sometimes it will uh, send an order to move the character, to move the animal. So on the server, this will be called and then it will be triggered here, which will send the action on all clients and also trigger on the server itself too. So this function will be called everywhere. So this is mostly everything about how the action system works. You have different uh, type of parameter that you can pass, so objects. If I go to uh, escape, you can see this one uh, pass a network object as parameter. And you also have a refresh. The refresh is a different type of action. It works the same way than other action. It's just that by default, a refresh is always um, from the server to the client. So this one will never be called on the server and cannot be triggered from a client. So this is usually just to refresh some uh, variable. So in the case of the character, it will send uh, the character state. So this is usually updated on the server based on the action that I receive. And then it will just update the state which contains um, the position and then the, the, the direction it's moving and the direction it's facing. And also a timing to avoid glitch. So if I go back to the receive sync, you can see here that uh, it will do a check to make sure that the package are received in the right order. So I think this covers all the basics in uh, Survival Engine Online. There's probably a lot more to know, but uh, I'll add more details in the documentation. And uh, if you have any question, you can uh, always join Discord and uh, ask people there.